In the light of day, it's plain to see that Highland Park has seen better days. The city within Detroit was home to a Ford plant and Chrysler's headquarters. Now, once grand homes are boarded up, others torn down, leaving empty lots. You'll also come across wooden boxes here where street lights once stood. In 2011, the local power company repossessed more than a thousand lights because the struggling city owed more than four million dollars. To settle that debt, the city agreed to have its street lights removed. I don't think a lot of people fully appreciate the role that light plays in neighborhoods yes. until the light's gone. Yes. Shamika Nichols is the executive director of Solidarity, an environmental nonprofit started here when the lights were taken away. But what happens when you leave an entire neighborhood in the dark? You uh, definitely don't see children playing outside, uh, you know, a little later into the evening. You don't see community gathering in places like where we are now. Rather than relying on the city or the utility, They've raised money to install solar-powered streetlights. In the last decade, they've put in 17. This idea of building, like, solar-powered street lamps in blighted communities, I think a lot of folks might hear that and think, why? This gives us a unique opportunity to not only implement a solution to just have physical light in our community, but also to shed the light on some of the injustices that are going on in terms of equity. It's about more than just light. Of course. Part of that larger solution is internet access. The newer model streetlights also serve as Wi-Fi hotspots. A lack of internet access was something we noticed during COVID when children weren't able to get online for school and folks were not able to apply for jobs at some of the assistance programs. Solidarity works with partners in the neighborhood, perhaps none more important than Shamayeen Harris, known around here as Mama Shu. For years, she's been building her own little community called Avalon Village. It includes an after-school homework house for kids, even a basketball court. She also hosts a summer camp and a fair for women entrepreneurs. Mama Shu, you know what a lot of people do. They do well for themselves, they get an education, and they leave the hood. But you decided to not just stay, but to rebuild it. Why? <laughs> this is... Uh, where I was born. Um, this is where I was living. So I just decided to fix up where I was living in. Mama Shu and Solidarity put their first solar streetlight right outside her house. This work has taken on special meaning for Mama Shu. In 2007, her two-year-old son, Jacoby Ra, was killed by a hit-and-run driver. Then, this past January, her son, Chin Yelu, was shot and killed. You know, uh, most people, they lose one child, it breaks them. You lose two children. I know. And, and it seems as if it's almost had the opposite effect on you. How can that be? I really think that I probably was just blessed with an extra dose of resiliency, changing grief into something glorious, mm. you know, um, pain into power. It was a dying neighborhood. People were like, I'm getting away from here, I'm getting away from here. I'm like, hmm, this is a nurturing ground to me. If it takes a village, that's what Mama Shu is hoping to give her community. And through this push for renewable energy, Shamika Nichols says they have learned a lot about how to foster independence. There also seems to be a, a, a lesson here in teaching kids that look like us about green energy, about this new frontier. Yeah, my son actually uh, has like play dates where he's pretending to organize, you know, folks to be able to fight against some injustice. They're building something in Highland Park. They may have a long way to go, but now there is new light here, and with it, a new hope. So Solidarity plans to keep raising money to put up even more lights, and they say that the lesson for other communities, if they can do it, anyone can. We did reach out to the mayor of Highland Park and the utility company, DTE. They both say that the agreement to remove the lights back in 2011 was in the best interest of the community as part of an austerity plan uh, during tough economic times. But again, to, to see officials, you know, ripping those those power, those power, those lights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out of the ground, yeah. you know, 10 years ago. And then they have, I mean, they were in the dark. Right. I mean, think about this for years. They were in the dark. Kids outside playing in the no. dark. That's so metaphorical, too. Yes. How, and, how can you donate to... 
as well, solidarity, you can, you, you can help, you mm -hmm. can donate to solidarity, but what they want is for this to spread to other communities mm -hmm. around the country, folks who can, you know, take back their energy independence. Well, how about the kids who didn't have internet during COVID? Yeah, they right. couldn't even be on school. They yes. couldn't get online. So. Good story. Thank you. Okay. You start a little spark right mm -hmm. there. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.